Hey guys, I'm Nicole. Um, I kind of had all intents and purposes of recording something fiery and playful this morning. And then I started moving and I realized that I myself needed something a little bit more grounded and stretchy and relaxed and gentle. So that is what we're gonna do. Um, with all of that said, if you like to practice with props, grab a pillow, a blanket, a bolster, things that you have around that might help you um, have some extra support. If you like to practice with props, great. If not, also fine. Um, let's go ahead and get started lying on our backs. Super gentle grounding start. And pull both knees into the chest and take a little bit of a rock from side to side. Maybe some small circles on the low back. And allow the eyes to soften shut and the back of the eyes to soften into the head. And offer yourself one really nourishing and complete cycle of breath right here. So full inhale and even pause at the top of the inhale. And then open the mouth for the exhale and let it go. And cross right ankle over the left knee coming into a reclined pigeon, figure four. So the right arm is gonna thread through this little triangle you've created with the arms and left arm reaches around. So you're interlacing the hands either around the left shin or the back of the left thigh. Then just start to roll at the ankles. Maybe switch direction of the circles. And then dropping the arms either into a cactus or out into a T. Stack the right knee all the way on top of the left knee. You might work towards the double eagle leg clasp or maybe that's not available in your body today. Either way, we're gonna drop both legs off to the left side of the mat, taking a supine twist and getting a little bit of a stretch into outer hip. Check that both shoulders are engaged with the floor and then maybe you drop the gaze over to the right fingertip. Inhale to come back through center and then we'll swap it out. Left ankle will stack on top of right knee. So starting in this reclined pigeon figure four shape, the left arm threads through, right arm reaches around. So you're interlacing the hands either around the right shin or the right thigh. And then you might roll out the ankles, flex and point the toes. Last big cycle of breath here. Really letting the nervous system start to calm down. And drop the arms either into a cactus or out into a T. Left knee stacks all the way on top of the right. You might find the double clasp or, or maybe not. And then let the legs drop over to the right side of the mat. Again, both shoulders are touching the floor. That will help the twist kind of distribute its way throughout the spine. Maybe you drop gaze towards left hand, left fingertips. And bringing the twist, twist all the way through the crown of the head. And using your inhale, let's come back through center, unraveling the legs. We're gonna hold on to the outside edges of the feet for happy baby. So in this shape, Knees are pulling towards the floor on either side of the torso. You could find a little rock side to side, or my favorite in this shape is to play with straightening out through one leg and then the other leg, maybe both legs at the same time. I'm getting some gentle and kind of passive opening in the hamstrings. And then making your way back through neutral. Let's plant the feet to the floor, hip width distance apart. Hands drop down by the sides and then grounding into the feet on your inhale, let's press the hips up high, rolling shoulders underneath you. If you are looking for something super restorative, you also have the option here of bringing some support underneath the tailbone here and resting into a supported bridge pose. 
but we're not here for too long, just a couple cycles of breath. You also have the option of interlacing hands underneath the back. It'll provide a little bit more of a shoulder opening. And then releasing clasp of the hands. If you've got it, exhale, slow roll down the spine, one vertebrae at a time. Once you're down, pull the knees into the chest. And then just rock up and down the spine several times here. So you're kind of massaging out the back side of the body until eventually you'll land all the way up into a seat. Legs extend long in front of you. Let's keep the left leg long. Bend into the right knee. So the bottom of the right foot comes to the inner left thigh. You're gonna start by sitting up tall out of the waist, twist the upper body to the right, so over the bent leg. And then the left hand will land somewhere along the left leg or maybe to the floor. Right arm is gonna come up and over. So you're reaching the right hand towards the left toes and bringing a lot of length into the right side body. And keep spinning the right shoulder open to stack on top of left. On your next inhale, let's rebound back through center. Plant the right hand at the right hip. We're going to keep the legs positioned as they are, but ground into the right knee and the left heel and lift the hips. And then inhale to drop the hips back through center. We'll swap it out. Right leg extends long. Bend into the left knee, left foot to the inner right thigh. And we'll start by twisting upper body to the left. Right hand stays down somewhere along the leg or the floor, maybe all the way to the foot. Left arm reaches up and over. And then imagine someone was standing at your right foot, your extended leg, and pulling the left arm in that same direction. So lengthening out down left side body, opening up even into the intercostal muscles, which help us breathe. Keep spinning left shoulder open. And then on an inhale, back up through center, left hand plants at the left hip, ground into the right heel and the left knee and lift the hips, gaze on the right fingertips. And releasing the hips back down through neutral, bottoms of the feet come together. So we're butterflying out the legs here. Hold on to the big toes. Again, sit up really tall out of the waist. This might already be a tight shape in the body. And if so, you can hang out right here. Or you can fold forward, elbows to press into the inner thighs, knees release towards the floor. And using your inhale, come back up through center. Legs extend long. Toes pull back. Spine is tall and then use your exhale to fold. And keep pulling the toes back towards body so that the heels kick forward to the front of the mat. And then drop the head so that the chin pulls in towards the chest. And using your inhale. Come back up through center. We're gonna plant the hands underneath the shoulders, bend into the knees, feet plant hip width distance, and then inhale to lift the hips. Roll the shoulders together onto the back body. Tuck the tailbone up towards the sky so that the glutes engage. And releasing the hips back down. We're gonna keep the feet planted use the hands to kind of walk yourself forward so that you're standing up on the feet, but you're in this super crouched ball. You might even shift your weight into the toes so that the heels lift. Then you're just going to clasp opposite elbows around the knees and really round in. Chin in towards chest. Imagine that you could press the back of the heart into the space behind you. And then release the heels to the floor. Lift the hips forward, fold, Uttanasana. Clasp opposite elbows here and just sway from side to side. And dropping the head, soften the jaw. And your next inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the spine and then open the mouth for your exhale, release. One more time, inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. 
Bring hands to interlace at the low back so you're opening the shoulders and the heart and then keep that clasp of the hands and exhale, fold. Releasing hands back down towards the floor. Take a big step back with the left foot and then soften the left knee to the mat. Really press the hips down and forward so you're getting some length in the front of the left hip. Feeling the heart to the front of the room. And then on your exhale, you'll just straighten out through the right leg, finding a half split. Always option to slide towards full split here. So right leg forward, left leg back. Meet yourself wherever you're at along the way. Mm. If this is a pretty intense shape or if it doesn't feel possible, you can also grab books or blocks or something to set the hands onto to bring the ground a little bit higher. Keep pulling the right toes back. Right hip back. And then rebending into the right knee. We'll lift the left knee from the floor and we're just gonna pivot to the left, finding a wide legged forward fold. So feet are parallel to the ends of the mat. Hands can come anywhere along the legs or to the feet or to the floor. And then just drop the head. If the head meets the floor pretty easily, walk the feet a little closer together. If you feel like the head is almost to the floor and that you really want to get it there. You could walk the feet a little bit wider. And using your inhale, it's halfway lift, lengthen the spine. On your exhale, release. We're gonna pivot to the back of the mat, and I realize I'm moving you away from the camera. That is okay, or away from the computer screen. Both hands are gonna come to the inside of the left foot. Drop the right knee down. And then you're either going to stay right here on the hands or you can lower down onto forearms or bring forearms to a prop. This is a big opening in the left hip. You also have the option of bending into right knee and reaching left hand around for the right toes. And building up this opening in the muscles requires us to hang out here for a bit of time. So just breathe into it, let the breath soften the sensations in the body. And then releasing right toes if you've got them on your inhale, let's press back up to the hands, lift the right knee. We're going to pivot back to the right into our wide forward fold and then swing all the way back around to the top of the mat and take a big step forward with the left foot, but feet land wide at the edges of the mat and the hips drop low. Elbows to the knees, hands to the heart. Let the tailbone root down, crown of the head reach high. Maybe the eyes close. Again, we're moving really slowly today. And just let it feel good. On your exhale, lift the hips, forward fold, Uttanasana. Walk the feet back to hip width distance apart. And then take a big step back with the right foot. Drop the right knee to the floor and then straighten out through the left leg. Left toes pull back, left hip pulls back. Again, always option to slide left leg forward, right knee back to work your way towards full split or landing anywhere in between. It's important when we're stretching that we meet our edge, the place of discomfort, but that we don't go past it. So yoga has this really common injury called yoga butt where people tend to over stretch the hamstrings and it causes an injury at the point where basically for um, very simple terms where your hamstring meets your butt. Yoga butt. So if you feel like there's pain, sharp pain, tension, then you've gone too far. If it's an uncomfortable sensation, breathe into it. And let's re-bend into the left knee, moving back towards a half split if you've taken it farther. And then we'll lift the right knee from the floor. I'm gonna turn around so that I don't pivot and put my butt to the camera. <laughs> Yoga butt. 
Um, let's pivot now to the right. And release the upper body down, hands anywhere along the legs or the feet or the floor. And if you can get the forehead to the floor, really soften into that point of contact. And if you can't get the forehead to the floor, the top of the head to the floor, then just sense into the weightiness of the upper body. And the feeling that you're not really needing to hold yourself up here much. And on your inhale, let's halfway lift, lengthen the spine, pivot to the right. So again, you're moving towards the back of the mat. Bend into the right knee, dropping hips down and forward. And you can either stay on the hands or you can lower down towards forearm. And or you can bend into the left knee and reach the right hand around for left toes. All are options. A couple more big cycles of breath here. Releasing left toes, if you've got them clasped. Press back up to the hands, lift the left knee. We're gonna pivot all the way back to the left and swing around to the top of the mat. Take a big step forward with the back foot, Malasana Yogi Squat. Palms come to touch at the heart. We're gonna lengthen up through the spine here and then if this is where you're at, if this rhythm and pace feels good for you today, then stick with it and hang out right here. Or you could shift your weight into the left foot, lift the right heel from the mat and ground the right knee to the floor and then come back through center and swap it out for the other side. So just inviting some mobility into the hips, into the knees, moving back and forth here a couple of times. And last one, each side. Making your way back through neutral, and then let's lift the hips forward, fold, Uttanasana. Walk the feet all the way to the back of the mat. So you're landing in a high plank, and in your high plank shape, I want you to press the floor away, and then pull the chin into the chest so you're looking at the toes, bringing length down the back body. Soften the knees to the floor. Keep looking to the knees. And then come up onto the fingertips and active around through the back body, finding this cat shape. Drop the palms to the floor, open the heart to the front of the room, cow pose, shoulders together and down the back body. And then one more time, shift to the fingertips, active around through the back body, chin in towards chest. Come back through a neutral spine. And then walk the hands forward. We're gonna come all the way into a puppy pose or heart melting pose so that the hips stay lifted. This is absolutely one of my favorites, really big shoulder heart opener. Knees are grounded to the floor, hip width distance apart. And the idea in this shape is that the heart would reach the floor before the chin would. And using your next inhale, let's come back up through a tabletop position for a moment. And then we're just gonna lower all the way down to the belly. Untuck the toes. Right knee bends. Actually, let's do left knee bends so that you guys can see me. Right arm extends out to a T. And then we're just going to roll onto the right shoulder so that the left toes drop behind the back. And you can either stay here or you could bring left hand behind the back, even working towards interlacing fingers. If you're feeling super bendy in the spine and in the right shoulder, you have the option of bending into the right knee and planting the right foot next to the left. And letting the knees keep twisting over the side of the body. And using your inhale to come back through center. Extend right leg long. If you've bent it, roll all the way back through the belly and then over to the other side. Left arm extends to a T. 
And then we'll bend into the right knee, and on your exhale, roll onto the left shoulder. Right toes drop behind the back. And you can either stay here or bring right hand behind the back. And again, you have the option of bending into the left knee and planting the left foot next to the right foot and even letting the knees kind of keep twisting over to the right. And then using an inhale, let's re-straighten through the left leg. If you've bent into the left knee, roll all the way back to the belly. And then plant the hands underneath the shoulders. Ground into the knees and press all the way back into a child's pose. So knees walk apart, heart softens towards thighs, and walk the fingertips out long in front of you. And if it's possible here, we're going to let the forehead rest to the floor. And I'm going to offer that this be the final shape for our practice today. But if you'd like to finish out your practice in a Shavasana or in a seated meditation, those are options as well. Take a couple really big cycles of breath. And letting the breath really calm down the nervous system. And again, you can either hang out in your child's pose a bit longer, or you could walk the hands back towards body coming up into a seat. Keep the eyes closed for as much of the transition back as you can. And hands can either come to the heart or they can stay resting wherever they are at. And thank you guys for taking some time to practice this morning or afternoon or whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. Namaste.